Hello everybody and welcome to Map Fights Battle League. Tonight we have EBQC Warriors versus White Wolves. Uh, the first map that's going to be starting off is Sand River. Keep in mind the attacking team, which is Team 2, will be attacking two times. And if they do win one and lose one, then there will be a third attempt. And the third attempt, they will be allowed to swap tanks. The first two attempts, attackers cannot change tanks. Defenders are allowed to change tanks. Now, let's go ahead and jump over into the game here. We're going to see a lot of strategy implemented on Sand River. Sand River with multi-base assaults is going to be very difficult just because you have a lot of defensive positions. Um, especially if they only want to defend the A flag. You don't really need a lot of people defending that at the B flag. Or maybe it's opposite. Um, the flag up near the northern part of the map, it's a lot easier to defend. You can get more people up there. While the one at the bottom of the map, it's a lot easier to get tanks down there quickly just because of how quickly you can move heading downhill rather than heading back uphill trying to get into position. So today, Is it I'm the host, and I have Blade with me. So we're, we're going to be... Hello, everybody. Yeah, we're, we're going to be doing some commentating over this and having quite a bit of fun doing it. Well, maybe a lot of fun. We're, we'll, we'll find out whenever that happens. But other Is than it one that, capture point on this map more in the open than the other? Um, The A cap... I, I do want to say A cap. I think it might be A cap because A cap is up in the northern part, and then the B cap is uh, further near um, the southern spawn on San standard battle. So it's around that area for regular standard battle, but a little bit more forward. Uh, that cap can be pretty easy to hit if you have a T100 LT with, let's say, like a really good camo crew. There's kind of a bush that you can get into as well to hit that spot and hold it off as much as you can. And right now, it looks like they're going to be starting to show off the tanks here. It looks like we're going to be doing Tier 9s. Um, oh, I, yeah. You know, I, I'm newer to this, so whenever it comes down to it, we're going to be looking at a couple of things. And this and is seeing, my first time. Yeah, Blade's first time. <laughs> you know, going to try and drag him into more of these when his wife allows it, that is. <laughs> uh, happy you got a laugh out of that. You know, it really does depend on his wife. Well, depends on what we got going on. And, and that too. Definitely. She all works right, so, all day, so my oh, evenings are for her. snap. I need to be careful. Uh, I'm trying to What'd open you do? my tea. And I spilled a little bit on me. That's unprofessional. Yeah, you want to start that back up? Do I want to what? No, I, I well, don't want to do that ever. I got to I gotta take a screenshot before this disappears. All right, so we do see a bad <laughs> chat. See an artillery here. We got one more tank that they're going to be opening up. So they are only allowed three tanks with the same name. If they have more than one, one of them has to stay out of the fight. And they will be down a player. WZ-111. So we got Vulgar Fool inside the 777. 777 is going to be a really good threat out there. Especially with yep. the most recent buff that they put on it. Honestly, dude, um, the buff that they put on that 777 is amazing. Just because they gave it rotation speed... They gave it, okay, so it's the B cap. The B cap is in the northern and the A cap is in the southern. Okay, so yep. more than likely we're going to see heavy defense around B cap from uh, EBC. Well, EBQC. I'm so sorry, you guys, that I mispronounced your name there as I pour my tea into a cup and spill a little bit more on myself because I'm an absolute Muppet. Okay, I should have done this we're gonna before do here. we started, honestly. <laughs> Oh, I'm just making a mess now. I need to stop. Okay, you know we'll we'll uh we'll, we'll hammer that out here in a sec. Yeah, so we have Vulgar Full on EBQC. We're gonna be going over their tanks real fast. We're looking at an object triple seven version two. We have a Conqueror two five seven, another Conqueror, a Bad Chat one fifty five fifty five. On top of that, we have 
a T-54 Lightweight Conqueror and 705. And for White Wolves, we have a Conqueror, Batch Hat 25-ton AP, uh, three compounds are 50 tons, a Concept 1B, WZ-111-4. We have two of those. And, yeah, we're looking at some really nasty 130 millimeters on the uh, White Wolves, so... These guys are going to want to be yeah, a little bit careful. Yeah, White Wolf looks like they're making a really aggressive push up north here. I think I was a little bit late on my screenshot because I see a Concept 1B that I didn't notice before. But Marshall already taking a shot. Probably coming up here from up top. Marshall is oh, in. Wow. The... No. Where's Marshall? Oh, that's White Wolf. It's all backwards over on my end. Okay. Yeah. So far, some conflict up at... A7 along with B8. B8 should be a really good defensive position, except for they are aiming up, but they do have a super conch. Well, not super conch, a conqueror. And they have their own triple seven down here. So, pretty good lineup right here. Coming up top, we have another conqueror. They have a really good crossfire holding back the aggressors on A8. But right now, we have Cap going off. Uh, it seems like White Wolves had a little bit of a falling back whenever it came down to holding that defensive position to try and prevent the capping here. No. EBQC. I am so lost. Team 1. Is Team 1 defending yeah. Team 2 attacking? Team. No, Team 2 is defending. Okay, so we have White Wolves' blue team attacking right now. Okay. Right. So, yeah, White Wolves is making a good play. Uh, just the colors are confusing me. I have... I look over at the screenshot. It's opposite of what the game is showing me on the inside, and I just... Yeah. that That's going to take a minute to get used to until Wargaming decides to, you know, add the overlays back to the players, showing us the hit points and the amount of damage that they're doing. But right now, Concept 1B taking a little bit of a beating. Tracked out in the open. Batch had 25 ton coming over top. Putting in a shot. Good take down. Top of that conqueror, we have the 257 coming in to try and intercept the bat chat. Bat chat is still able yep. to put out multiple shots with that clip. Right now, looking like a pretty decent game, except for EBQC, they still have a lot of health on their side. While White yes, Wolves. Yes, they do. Yeah, White Wolves, they do have quite the amount of people up, but they have three people, two people now. Well, three people that are still one shots. Marshall. And Elite Storm, along with that Lone Killer, all as one shots right now, so they're going to want to play a little bit careful. We have uh, Blue, which Blue was inside the compounds are 50 ton. So the compounds are 50 tons, it looks like they're coming up from up top. And we have someone who's sideways. Yep, we have somebody <laughs> drilled over on her side here. Yep. Oh, there he goes. And there we go. The triple seven is doing absolutely fantastic right now, using that armor as much as you can. And the bat chat up in the rear, able to get some shots off. They still have an artillery up on EBQC right now in the back. The bat chat 155, and we yep. have two defending the base directly on top of the base. So right now it's a three v three, but EBQC they have a lot of hit points on their side. But at the same time, since they pulled out an artillery, they are short-handed by one tank while White Wolves has three mobile tanks. But then yeah, again, they, White Wolves right now, what, they're left on the White nothing got medium. Position. Uh, to, to a point, right now what EBQC has is armor with heavy tanks, but we're probably going to be watching. Yep, 705 mm. taken out, 257 left yep. standing. Does the Bad Chat 25 ton have enough ammunition to clip him out? It seems like he does not. He is backing off now. Yep. Scratch that. There we go. This should be an easy take home with only the bat chat left at E0. And here we go. So we have Blue that's in the compounds of 50 ton that's still alive. And Marshall. Marshall took out the bat chat 25 ton. Honestly, Marshall had some really good execution taking out that clip and moving around as much as he could. Yeah, yeah, he did a good job. Yeah, I would say that was a good run right there. Yeah, I told you they had position, man, at the end there. Yeah, they I mean, did. I know they just had the mediums, but they had position. Well, along with that, the compounds are fifty ton. You know, you got a really thick turret stacked on top of that. Yep. You know, so white wolves right here. You know, taking their first victory. They still have one more to get, depending on if team two, which EB. QC is able to defend against. 
But Compods are 50 ton with uh, Born Lord, Born Lob. Now, I'm just going <laughs> to. I'm going to start messing up with so many names. Oh, why did it? <laughs> we got broken the uh, with uh, Compods are 50 ton with 2476. Okay. Up next, Marshall in the bat chat, 25 ton AP with 2415. Uh, boss in the WZ111-4 with 2127. We have Blue in the Companzer with 1594. We have Spec inside the Conqueror with 1589. Up next, we have Elite Storm XD in the Concept 1B with 1412. Lone Killer in the WZ111-4 with 904. We have Spartan in the Companzer 50-ton with 723. Over on EBQC size, we have... Oh, dude. Doc. I'm just going to call him Doc. Inside the Conqueror of 2612. <laughs> Coming down, we have Stefan with the Bat Chat 155 55. Stefan pulling out some really good support with that artillery with 2161. Well, 2561. Along with that, Volker up next in the 777 with 1914. We have Steve in the Conqueror with 1518. We have. Dude, I'm so sorry if I bomb you guys' names. I'm just going to make it nice and simple with M. We're just going to call him M. You know, judge me all you want. And, you know, the, the screen's gone. It's going to kick me out. But, you know what? <laughs> it, it, we, we all learn by making mistakes and having fun. And, and this one, you know, it's just... It's going to take a minute to try and get in there to have that. Or I actually get completely booted out of the game. That one works too, you know? So I actually had a crash on my end. Okay. Something tells me that was extremely loud. I uh, wonder you still if, have uh, eyes on the score screen? I do not. You do not? You're back in the garage? No, I'm there in the next match. They're already in the next match? Yeah. Oh, that they, means uh, that they went ahead, they backed out, they started right away. And then I got yep. dropped completely. Oh, well, that sucks. Because I, I remember well, them saying that they it. were going to do about like five minutes in between each one for the lineup. No, it's actually bringing me in the Sand River. Okay. Yep. So I'm technically still yep. here. I wonder why it dashboarded me then. I don't know. Maybe because you weren't there when they launched. Yeah, but I don't know why it would dashboard me and quick me out, of, kick me out of the game. They All completely right, so here we go. white. White Wolf went completely the other way this time. They're, yeah, they're, they're going down the A cap. No, they're going to B cap. A cap, A cap, sound low. That was really strange. I got kicked out. Um, what did EBQC pull out this time? I'm actually gonna head over. Um. So 705 again, we have another Conqueror, we have 257, from the top we have another Conk, we have another light tank out here, T-54 lightweight is what that looks like. And then heading down, and around we have two heavies inside here, which is a Conqueror and the 777, and it looks like they're filling the artillery once again. So White Wolves pulling yeah. up, they have the Conqueror, they're pretty much going to have the same lineup, so we have the Conqueror, Concept 1B, the two WZs. Right now we have uh, M losing a little bit of health over there on EBQC, and uh, we got Spec over on White Wolves that lost one shot worth. Lone Killer's taking some shots, Lone Killer. What was Lone Killer in? Because they're not allowed to change their tanks until the third lineup, Ooh, if there's yeah. a third lineup. So we have Lone Killer yeah. inside the WZ. Alright, Stefan was taken down, so their artillery is out for the count. White Wolves probably made this play to take down the artillery because they want them to lose that support. Coming back yep. down, let's check out the uh, Concept 1B and the WZs down here. Concept 1B taking a little bit more of a back flank here. Uh, right now, EBQC is lacking in gun depression. Their Conquerors are over on the right side when we should be having one over here on the left. Let's actually take a look at what we have back here. And Conqueror coming in for the flank. Honestly, I feel like the 705A should have come in for the flank there. Rather than the uh, Conqueror. 705A, when it was using elevation, could have been a lot better with the flanking. But right now, looking like a pretty decent, evened out game. Hit points are kind of spread across the board without much of a problem. 
We have the compounds are 50 tons. They're not really going to want to sit on the cap yep. just because it is exposed. But if they did come down here with a light tank, you can kind of get your light tank inside this bush here to stay concealed. But then again, if the enemy team knows about that spot, all they have to do is blind fire in that location. Yeah, EPQC seems to have a little better positioning this time, though. For the... That's why I mean, B's... A's a lot harder to, to take because it's more open. Yeah. Okay, coming down low, we have uh, Steve, which was taken out by... Uh, that kind of sucks it doesn't tell us who killed who, but more than likely one of the WZ-111-4s just because of their big alpha guns with that 490. Coming over, we're going to be taking a look at the Concept 1B, taking cross shots, heading around for the heavy that's coming up. The heavy probably just got punished. Not able to really see hit points going on too well. And White Wolves right now having really good execution, but... You know, they're, they're ahead by two tanks right now, but uh, hit points are starting to get lower. EBQC seems like they're getting a little bit better positioned, just a tad bit. But yeah. White Wolves right now is starting to get advantage on the hillside over here on the left. So, more than likely, if they stay focused and they just go around, this is just going to be an absolute cleanup. Yeah, they need to... Yeah. Yeah. EB's lost position on the, on the right. Yeah. On the, yeah, on the right. EBQC is still up, though. They have a heavy over here, which is still up and rocking, which is the triple uh, seven. They still have two super conks up and what looks to be a two five seven. If they would have, well, not super conks, but if they would have had their conquerors up on the hill. Around D seven. Or maybe even pushing up around, let's say, like F six, they could have had a lot better advantage on that side. But then yep, again, they I did agree. have a scout tank with the T-54 light tank that decided to push on that right side. I don't feel like you need to scout out the right side too much. Just because you can have your heavies up there and have them sit there and hold that position while your scout checks around the A flag. So heading to run down the uh, K line and J line to see if they're coming around from the bottom. But the compounds are 50 oh, seem to be having a little bit of a hold off against this triple seven. This guy over here by the buildings just got caught out in the open a little bit. He just lost a bunch of hit points. Uh, are you talking about the Conqueror, or...? I think it's... Uh, 257 it? hitting up around the rear. 257 Health. taken out. It's, there goes Ripper. Yeah, Ripper that's just the got 257 is one I was looking at. Okay. So right now, both the compounds are 50 tons. They're just, you know, sitting here and taking on the uh, triple seven. If they're loading heat rounds, you can go through the turret. Taking a look there, Compounder is knocked out. Bjorn yep. just lost a lot of health. That looks like to be about 700 hit points all within that one hit. And right now coming down low with the Conqueror. Kind of sucks I got booted out to the main menu. It'd be nice to know who's in what tank right now. Yeah, I'd I, I kind of feel like one of the Compounder on 50 tons should have went on the cap rather than trying to be aggressive against them. With it being multi-base assault and all. But we do have a couple guys coming up from the rear to hit the uh, B flag. So there's the bat chat coming up for B flag. Oh. But White Wolves right now, it's not looking too good. They still have their two heavies over here, uh, which more than likely, you know, they, they have decent hit points. Boss just took a shot inside the Concept 1B. Which means that Marshall, more than likely, is still inside the Bat Chat 25 ton. And he's down to a one shot right now. Concept 1B, probably down to a one shot. More than likely, yep, he's down. Elite Storm has got a decent amount of hit points left, but it's down to a two versus two. Uh, EBQC still has a lot of hit points on their side. So Bean and Volger have a decent amount of hit points. Uh, from what I know, Volger is probably still inside the triple seven. And they're going to be double teaming the concept 1b which leaves marshall yeah the bat chat made it around back and flanked him <clears throat> yeah marshall left as the only standing in white wolves inside a bat chat 25 ton it looks like he's down to a one hit right now but if marshall plays this right he can use his concealment to his advantage to be able to hit this a lot better <laughs> Or maybe even sit on B flag and try and cap out from there. Let's go ahead and take a look what Marshall's trying to do here. 
But with two minutes left on the clock, more than likely, uh, Bean and Vulgar might actually just kick back and wait for that timer to go down. Yeah, because they ain't going to have time to cap now. Uh, no, not with the amount of time that's left on the clock, no. You know, now that I look at it, we do have a little bit of an issue. So what I'm going to do, we're going to take this. We're going to drop map fights down to the bottom left. That way you guys can get an idea of the timer with what we have left. So right now, Marshall's having a really good play. He just wants to try and kick back and see if they're going to be aggressive and spot them out. But what he doesn't know right now is we have them sitting in G7 not moving around they just want to sit there and not risk anything because they know that the bat chat 25 ap has got quite the amount of concealment and depending on how these guys are set up they're not going to want to try and push them so as you can see here we have <clears throat> vulgar up in the front of the triple seven just you know peeking pulling up and behind them we have beam inside the conqueror just sitting back and waiting uh the bat chat's going to sneak up behind them you think so it's looking like it. He's, yep, he's still he, he, doesn't, the he doesn't know if they're still there or not. You know, like the second oh. he spots them out, because look, he's going full speed right now. He is full sending it. And right there getting detected both sides, missing one round that might actually cost him, depending on if this round hits him from the conqueror. And there we go. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a screenshot of the score screen and then jump back to the menu so I don't get knocked out of the next match. But there's going to be a third round because EBQC was able to uh, defend off on that one. Yep, that was a good... They, they had good position on that one. Yeah, they did. Although they, I thought they were going I, I to lose it when they lost that one that um, <clears throat> right side over there, but they pulled it off. All right, so while sitting inside the garage, I'm going to go ahead and pull up the uh, screenshot that we got here. So looking at this, we have Bjorn inside the compound of 50 ton with 3474. We have Marshall in the Batchat 25 AP with 2471. We have Elite Storm inside the Concept 1B with 1645. We have Blue inside the Common Punter 50 Ton with 1533. We have Boss with the WZ111-4 with 1390. We have Spec inside the Conqueror with 1051. We have Lone Killer with 511. We have Spartan inside the Common Punter 50 Ton with 440. Bean inside the Conqueror with almost 5,000 combined in total. So... 4,955. We have... Dector... I need to full screen this. No, I'm learning. I'm learning. Okay, Dector inside the Conqueror with 3,501. We have Vulgar inside the 777 with 2,296. We have uh, M inside the 705 with 1,462. And we have Steve inside the Conqueror with 1,175. We have uh, Jim... Bo Watt QC inside the T-54 lightweight with 494, but 847 spotting. So he was getting out there. He did detect a couple of targets, which did help out his team quite a bit with that little bit of an early warning. But, you know, every once in a while, it's really hard to get that down. Especially on Sand River, a light tank can be useful. But at the same time, uh, as a defending team, I do not feel as if you're going to need a light tank. I, I would say getting maybe a faster medium or maybe in a faster heavy to be able to get in there, lock it down. That way you're not shorthanded whenever it comes down to a later fight because the light tanks can be limiting, especially whenever the op opposing team is running bat chats. Uh, up next, we have Ripper inside the object 257 with 413. We have Stefan with the bat chat 155, 55, which did absolutely nothing because White Wolves wanted to focus him out as quick as they possibly could to get him out of the match. Yeah, I, I was going to ask you, what do you think about them using a uh, an artillery? Um, the artillery on the second play, I kind of feel like they should have gone a like artillery should have taken a different position rather than oh, going definitely. to the same spot. You know, because they knew that he was there last time. More than likely, the second time they were going to do it again. Yeah, they wasted no time in going in and getting him. 
No, they they wanted to focus out that artillery because the artillery that's just you know if if you're kind of in a stuck fight that artillery is going to be making the difference inside the fight. And it, yeah, if you it, it can where you're in a standoff. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Artillery can make a big difference in a standoff. So, you know, focusing out artillery right away was a really good choice on White Wolf's side. And now we have them mm. selecting tanks. So, Volger taking out the 777 once again. We have Steve taking out an Emil. And Emil's going to be really a good choice for Sand River, just because of the 12 degrees of gun depression. Ripper taking yep. out the Yag Tiger. We have uh, Cloud. Claude. I am so sorry if I bombed your name. You know, you can criticize me all you want. But guess what? We're all Muppets Let's call someday. it Doc. Doc, yeah, just gonna stick with Doc and the Conk. Doc. Doc and the Conk. There we go. Doc and, and Stefan inside the Conqueror as well. We have Jim Bo Watt QC in the T54 lightweight once again. We have Bean inside the Conqueror, and we have M taking out the Objects of the Five. Gonna take a quick screenshot of this just in case. There we go. And as I said, happy I got that screenshot. Over on White Wolf size, we have Spec taking out a Conqueror, Marshall taking out the Bat Chat 25 AP once again. We have Bjorn, Spartan, and Blue all taking out Compons or 50 tons. We have Elite Storm taking out a T30, and Lone Killer taking out a Conqueror. We have Boss taking out the WZ111 1 4. Um, honestly, the T30 might be a really good choice to take out on this map, especially if they can get that T30 positioned correctly. You know, T-30s can be absolutely devastating tanks with that 155. All right, so it looks like they're going to be taking over B-Flag once again. Let's go ahead and head down to EBQC and see what they plan on their defense. So right now with their light <coughs> tank with uh, Jimbo, Jimbo's going to be pulling up on the top side here. This is going to be a really good early warning if he's able to spot them out. More than likely, it looks like he did spot out someone. May maybe. It's really hard to tell with the uh, UI that's right now in the game. And there we go. We got three Conquerors pushing up. This is a really good haul down position. So yeah, it does seem like they do know what's going on here. Marshall dodging a shell. Lucky for him, RNG was on his side to get up into that uh, A7 position. Looks like T30 is taking it slow. Going to be in the back of the pack. And the compounds are 50 tons. They're all pushing up along the backside here. And we have Bourne. He's taking a little bit of a beating. He took one shot, which, you know... The way that the compounds is put together, that one shot, it, it might not mean a whole lot, but whenever it comes down to a longer engagement, he is going to be regretting that he did take that shot. And But every once in a while, you got to make a risky play to get to the positions you want to take. Yep, I agree. Definitely. We had the Emil 2 and Triple Seven coming up on B8. Oh. There's going to be another choke point engagement here. Compounds are 50 tons taking this down. Bad Chat's just going to be waiting for the opportunity to push around and make a clip out. Or Bad Chat might be falling back to take care of some other stuff. We have Blue taking a nice good fat chunk of his health, about half. Looks like a double shot. Spartan also just took a shot along with that. Doc inside the Conqueror is the only one that has received any damage on EBQC. Uh, so far, it looks kind of like a stalemate at the moment. White Wolves making a little bit of a push with a Conqueror off to the side here. He is just waiting for the signal, probably to jump on cap or drive around the cap. Uh, depending on how they can make this play, we have the T-54 Lightweight coming up from the back of the spawn. It's going to be spotting out the T-30 more than likely. T-30 is being fired at right now. And there we go. Conqueror jumping onto the flag to apply a little bit of pressure. More than likely, T-54 Lightweight's going to be coming around the backside to get a couple of reset shots. That way, the Conquerors on this side do not have to pull over to risk hit points to make those resets. Or at least I'm hoping the T-54 comes over to get some resets. Ooh. And there we go. 705A pulling up yeah. and over the side here. M inside the 705A right now, making a little bit of a risky yeah. play. Losing quite a bit of health. Steve yep. losing a yep. massive chunk. It seems like Steve just learned why. Oh, no. <laughs> hold on. Steve is inside the Emil. Steve's over on the right side. Okay, Steve just took a big fat chunk. For a moment there, I was about to say, T he learned why White Wolves pulled out the T-30. But no, he did not. 
M right now, not looking super good. He's down to a one shot, maybe two shots, depending on the rolls. T-54 lightweight. He is definitely getting those reset shots, which is making it to where the Conquerors on EBQC are able to make a little bit of plays and not risk too many of their hit points. Yag Tiger taking a little bit of a beating here. The Yag Tiger is a Ripper. Uh, Ripper right now. It looks like he's only taken one shot worth of damage, and he's been, you know, trading back. We have Spec taking a hit. Spec inside a Conqueror. Emil just got taken out. Emil's knocked out in the back, which means that the mediums more yep. than likely now are free to push up. And right now, EBQC, it does not look like they are ready for this uh, background push coming from White Wolves. Yeah, we nope, have... Um, not at all. Yeah, we have... Uh, snap. Yeah, they're getting caught the across the triple seven coming back to try and you know hold back. <clears throat> Definitely, right now, White Wolves had extremely good execution. The bad chat decided to come around. Bad chat is extremely low health, down to maybe a two shot or a one shot. Uh, more than likely, the T fifty four lightweight has two more rounds that he has to put into Marshall. Maybe three more rounds before he's able to take him out. And right now, EBQC is just being slowly picked off because of this crossfire and well, well put yeah, together well. pincer by White Wolves. Yep. However, the T-54 Lightweight was able to take down Marshall inside the Bad Chat 25 ton. So good execution there on the part of Jimbo. And White that Wolves was, wins by base cap. That was just a really good, uh, that was a really good game plan they had White Wolves did. Yeah, that, that turned out really good. You know, yeah, White that worked Wolves, out well. The, the way that they had the Compounders push up, you know, risking those hit points right off the bat, totally okay. You know, there, there's no yep. problem with that, with what they just did. And, you know, White Wolves takes to win here. <clears throat> I'm going to screenshot this before they close the lobby or do whatever they're doing, because we have another one coming up. <clears throat> and I do believe the next one coming up is going to be against uh, CZR. But taking a quick look real fast, we have Spec inside the Conqueror of 21, well, 2911. We have uh, Spartan inside the Compound of 50 Thun with 1678. We have Blue inside the Compound of 50 Thun with 1582. We have Lone Killer inside the Conqueror of 1480. We have Elite Storm inside the T30 with 1478. Uh, up next to <laughs> that, we have Boss inside the WZ111-4 with 1359. We have Bjorn inside the Compounds of 50 Ton with 869. We have Marshall in the Bad Chad, 25 AP with 574. Over on EB QC, we have Jimbo inside the T54 Lightweight with 2861. Now, a light tank jumping up there on that high of the list. You know, I, I'm honestly a little bit surprised about that. So, Jimbo, fantastic job with that light tank taking down Marshall and applying that pressure from the back of the spawn to hit the reset on that cap. Um, up next, we have Ripper inside the Yag Tiger with 1534. We have Bean inside the Conqueror with 1506. Up next, we have Doc inside the Conk. With 1217, we have M in the 705 with 1041. We have Volker in the 777 with 386. Steve inside the Emil 2 with 385. Stefan inside the Conqueror with zero. Now, Blade, from my point of view, where we had that Emil stop and land, he was below the compounds or 50 tons. I kind of feel like if they would have had the Emil push up more towards the top right, and if we would have left let's say the triple seven where the emil was that would have been a better play on their part to utilize the gun depression that the emil offers in that situation i would i would agree with that 100 percent. yeah um yeah i think the emil was in a bad position for yeah especially against the 310 heat round pin from the uh composer yep. 50 time he needed to be where he could use his gun depression he was shooting up too much yeah just he, he was he wasn't utilizing his armor as much as he could have um, from your yeah. point of view, I don't know how well your point of view was in that area, but for me, I wasn't really able to get down in there to check that out. <laughs> so, um, I'm thinking we can go ahead and reset the scores back to zero because this is on a new map. 
Yeah, they're doing Alahoof this time. Yeah, so this each, be each time they do one, you know, the attacking team, uh, they want to take control of the map because it's uh, Map Fights Battle League. So basically, you control territory. Once you own the territory, you fight to defend it. You know, and that's that's what this is. They are fighting to defend or fighting to right. take over. So if they win two in a row, they take control. If they lose two, they do not take control, and the uh, team that has the map keeps the map, at keeps least that's my understanding. Yep. But if you win one and you lose one, you have one more attempt to take control or lose. And if the yeah, map... that's two out of three. If the map is not controlled by anyone, um, I do believe it is, it is in counter that they use to determine who takes it over. <laughs> Foo poo one. <laughs> uh. It'll be interesting to see how they attack this map. Yeah, El, El Huluf can be uh, really difficult, especially with the multi-base assault. So you have one cap that's actually down in the middle of the map in the ditch, which defending that map can be extremely difficult or really easy, just depending on what's going on. Now, with El Huluf, I'm going to double check a couple of things real fast. El Huluf is supposed to be... Nine, no. That's El Main. El Hoof is going to be 8 versus 8. And EBQC, it looks like EBQC is in control of El Hoof right now. Because yeah, they're just, you know, I, I just wonder if they're going to try to do the traditional, you know, round the end. Well, I'm, if, if you take the 1-2 line up near AB... Yeah. That that seems kind of limiting. But at the same time, it's kind of like the only way you can go without getting spotted out. Well, yeah. Unless you're really fast where you can get down in the bottom, down in the ditch. But more than likely, we're going to see a couple of fast tanks to try and take over that cap in the center and help defend it. We might see one or two light tanks, just depending on what goes on. Depending if it's tier 9 or tier 10. I do not know what tiers it's going to be. Scratch that. I know exactly what tier it's going to be. It's going to be tier 8s. Tier 8s, huh? Yeah, from the look at their list, it looks like we're going to be looking at some tier 8s. 8 versus 8 in tier 8. So, Borasks. I, I think a, a double Borask on this map would be kind of devastating now. Ooh, yeah. Especially with their concealment. Especially with the concealment. The right crew put together, you can make that extremely hard to counteract. There we go. Inferno. Inferno. Using the Inferno because it has an extra 50 millimeters of spaced armor in the front. That's a good choice. Yeah, it's... It's a good haul down tank. Did not have a tank ready. Okay, there we go. Defender. Okay, Steve inside the Iron Rain. Oh, yeah. I don't know about the Iron Rain. If he gets caught out, that's going to be really fast to be taken down. I kind of feel like yep. the uh, the Shaska would have been better. Ripper pulling out the KV4. We have uh, Bjorn pulling out the Strav. S1. We have Doc inside the Hydra. We have Spartan taking out the General. I wonder how they're going to be utilizing the General inside this. I kind of feel like the Batch Hat, well, the Borask would have been a better choice. Uh, we have uh, Stefan pulling out the Equalizer. Equalizer is going to be really nasty on this map, especially if they can manage to spot all of White Wolves without much of a problem to kind of lock them down. Uh, but looking at a spec is right now the only heavy armor that we see. We have Jimbo pulling out the Batch Hat 12 ton. We have Lone Killer also pulling out a Defender. Um... Spec just got swapped. No, what the heck? Okay, so they swapped him twice to get him yeah. lined up correctly. That was uh, yeah. a little confusing to see there. Asoma SM. 
There's a lot of reload time over on uh, EBQC's <laughs> side, but really good burst potential. Uh, boss pulling out the T32. We have blue taking out the stockade. Okay, since Spec did not have a tank selected, they actually uh, forced him to remove it. So that's what that was. That's why they swapped his side, because once they were ready and everyone was ready and they made the call out, he did not have a tank selected, which means that they are now down one heavy tank, which means um, White Ooh. Wolves might be having some problems whenever it comes down to that heavy push. But the T32, yep. if the T32 plays it right, that T32, uh, with the most recent buffs that it has received, is a very hard tank to take down. Okay, that's funky. There's now hit points on the left side of my screen once I actually load up the tanks. I like to I like the KV4 pick. I really do. Yeah, the KV4. I, I actually wonder how that's going to be uh, turning out. Because KV4, it did receive a buff quite some time ago for the armor. Alright, so White Wolves right now, they are marking A. It looks like the batch at 12 ton, which is Elite Storm's going to be pushing up as much as he can. Let's go ahead and take a jump over to EBQC and see what they are planning on doing here. EBQC, they oh. did pull out for tank destroyers just the Inferno. Well, not the Inferno, the uh, Iron Rain. So Iron Rain more than likely is going to be kicking it up top. But with that 30 second plus reload, I kind of do feel like yes. the Shaska, the SU-130 PM would have been a better choice over the Iron Rain. Especially with the heat yes. penetration that the uh, Shaska offers. They got a lot of, uh, lot of long load times. Yeah, with the Soma and everything else that they have. Yeah. Right, shots are already being fired from EBQC. They do have a couple of spots. It seems like their scout's doing a pretty good job. Little They're going straight for the T32. A T32 is down to 959. I have hit points on my screen now. This is kind of weird. But it's nice to have those there. Yeah, it is. Do you have hit points for EBQC? I do. Okay, no, I got, perfect. No, I just got hit points for... WW? One side. Yep. Okay, so T32 is down the 84 hit points. He has been focused out by the Iron Ring. Maybe the Iron Ring was a good decision, because look at that. T32 already brought pretty much out of this game down the 84 hit points, unless he tries to use all of his uh, gun depression and focus on that turret arm. Uh, so far, Lone Killer taking a little bit of damage down the 909. We have Marshall taking a little bit of damage. One shot. Lone Killer inside the Defender being focused out a tad bit. Uh, the Soma, more than likely. If I was in the Soma right now, I'd be trying to take out their heavy armor, the Defender, and not really, really worry too much about the Scouts. But there we go. Uh, M inside the Soma was taken out. Along with that, we have Volger inside the Inferno, which was taken out. Uh, White Wolves yep. right now still has everyone left on the field. Marshall taking a big fat chunk from the Emil. Uh, Marshall was just not. AB out. just lost so much. Yeah, Marshall just got smoked. Um, question about the Iron Rain. How was he taken out? Were you keeping track of him? Um, I didn't see what took the Iron Rain out. I, I clicked off of him okay. and, when I, uh, and he was gone. I, I don't know what happened. taking a little bit of now. damage in the stockade right now. Okay, Spartan I'm taking almost a thinking... hit. This, this is, uh... This is looking in the favor of White Wolves right now. They had a pretty good push coming down low. T32 was a really good choice to have just because of that 298 turret armor. Along with that, around a 6 second to 7 second reload, the 320 alpha. Really good choice. Kind of excited to see what the damage is going to be at the end of the game with that T32. And Defender, oh, Lone Wolf going in, taking out a couple. Elite Storm inside the bad chat being taken down uh, by more than likely... I actually have no idea because I can't really see maybe the artillery maybe the heavy tanks that are down low yeah kv the just Emil's went down too it's left down low which the emil is yeah inside uh, that is a uh, bean inside the emil and oh, the emil he just got am yeah emil got ammo racked so <laughs> even though um white wolves were actually down one tank uh it was technically an evened out fight because the artillery is uh, all that um, EBQC decided to pull out. And the artillery was kind of like one less of a tank to have down there. But don't get me wrong, having him as support's really good, but it really does depend if you're able to spot out the enemy team, but, especially on El Haluf. 
I just, I don't know. I just feel that in a, in a regular tank over an artillery, I think you could just do more. I, I can definitely agree with you on that. You know, I think taking artillery is a mistake. You know, and especially since uh, WW, White Wolves were actually down one man as well because they had a, a penalty on their side. And they still took this out with only seven versus eight. Yep. All right, so White Wolves with the win for that run right there, I would definitely say that turned out extremely good. And there we go. Bjorn inside the Straw of K, he put in a lot of work with 3,980 damage. That is a fantastic mm. run right there. We have Spartan inside the General, 1624. We have Boss inside the T32 of 1205. So yeah, Boss, he put in some work even though he was low health near the end there. Uh, we have Blue inside the Stockade with 1123. We have Lone Killer inside the Defender with 1108. Elite Storm and Marshall both inside Bad to 12 tons, both doing under 650 damage. They were there to be scouts, obnoxious, and just make sure to help support the team as much as they could. Real fast, we're going to go ahead and head back to the lobby before they start up the next match. We're going to apply the uh, screenshot filter here. Uh, heading over to the right side, we have Bean inside the Emil 1 with uh, 1279. We have Stefan inside the Equalizer with 1040. We have uh, Jimbo inside the Bat Chat 1210 with 988. We have Ripper in the KV4 with 931. We have Steve inside the Iron Rain with 875. We have Doc in the Hydra of 422. And we have M and Volger inside the Soma SM and the Inferno with zero damage on the field. Totally okay, though. Just because they did, they did get focused out once they came down low, and they kind of exposed themselves quite a bit. Yeah, they and did. the hit points are now off the screen. This is a, uh, this is sad. I liked having those last match. Those are nice to have. I wonder if that's a setting or what. Um, War Gaming's most recent update kind of messed with uh, spectator mode inside of these uh, matches. So more than likely, coming up next, they're going to be fixing that. All right, so we have both the bad chats. So we have um, White Wolves, which do they have eight players in the field this time? Yes, they do. So they might have two defenders yes, on the field this time. Yeah, we have two defenders on the field, a T-32 and a stockade. There we go. They are definitely ready this time. Since I have everyone here, Lone Killer taking a shot right away. Along with that, we have Boss Lone getting hit once again. Boss taking a shot, Lone taking two hits. Uh, do not know the trade counts there. Right now, White Wolves taking a little bit of a beating, a little bit low in health. Defenders inside this area. As long as EBQC pushes in, those defenders are going to have a really good run. But that's only if they push in. Defenders with their limited gun depression on this hill and ridge, they are going to be extremely limited in it being able to pull over and take shots correctly. Uh, going ahead and taking a look at EBQC. Having a medium push in inside the Inferno, more than likely we're looking at right now... Uh, Vulgar Cool, taking a shot right in the rear there for a decent chunk of hit points coming from that looked to be the medium up top. Vulgar taking just one shot. He's going to be a little bit hesitant now. He's trying to just... Seems like he's scouting out, waiting for a little bit of backup. Batchat 12 ton coming up behind him, getting a couple of shots in. Elite Storm is taking a little bit of a beating over on uh, White Wolf's side. A little bit of conflict coming down low. Vulgar popping that repair kit. Is that going to be worth it? Knowing that the, uh, you know, more than likely Defender has a 12 second reload. I don't feel like he needed to pop that repair kit right away. More than likely he might need it later, just depending if one of those bad chats decides to rush him. And the Ooh. Emil is knocked out once again in the same position. I don't feel like the Emil should be popping down low. I feel like the Emil should have been taken up higher and heading from the top section from the cap rather than coming down low. And Vulgar being focused out once again. It almost looks like they did the same play once again and it did yeah, not work. Fine. Coming down low we have Defender and a Bad Chat pushing up. We have Bad Chat heading over on left around D4. And coming from the flank we have B2. We have a Tank Destroyer and a Heavy Tank. Let's go ahead and move across the map real fast to see what these two are doing over here. 
that was decided over there myself. We have a Soma SM and the Iron Rain. Iron Rain's actually in a really decent position to get some cross shots here if he wants to stay. Especially if they can spot out down at the A cap. But right now, White Wolves are having really good execution here in El Haloof. Coming up top, let's actually go check out what heavies we have up top. Defender looks like he's pushing up, which is more than likely might be Spec. Spec is pushing up because he has more hit points. The KV4. And down low, we have a IS-6. Or is that the Hydra? I do believe that is the Hydra. Which is Doc inside the Hydra. Spec right now taking one shot, but trading back, it looks like. Doc taking one shot. Uh, Spec is actually down to a one shot, and Spec is knocked out. Probably didn't need to push up that far. We still had the Strav 1 off in the background, and the medium up on top of the hill. Which that medium yeah, looks the to Iron be Rain the, uh, the uh... general. Yeah, the Iron Rain is so Iron... traveling as a group in the back. That's a really devastating platoon. Especially yeah, the 263 are... APCR pin from the Soma. And the uh, 5 shot, 6 shot capacity that the Soma offers with the 1200 uh, potential damage output. That is a very oh, oh, Actually, oh. 1500 potential. Oh. There we go. White oh, yeah, they are starting to fall apart now. They should have had their general probably falling back to see what was coming up from the rear. But we still have the two light tanks left over on White Wolves up near the top section looking for artillery right now. And the uh, S1 getting knocked out. So Bjorn is taken out. We have both Batch had 12 tons left up standing. I wonder how they're going to be performing on this. It looks like the Soma SM was taken out. It's now down to a 2v2. Um, more than likely, these Batch had 12 tons. What I would do is I would actually position one. Batch at 12 chun around like um, C B5 B5 up near that hill and they get the other one on the cap you know hit that cap because right now these guys they are lacking power to weight and mobility if they both jump on cap they might be able to cap it out especially if they went for that double shot and they tried to focus out the tracks of the Hydra as he's coming over the hill yeah, I don't think they can get up there to stop them yeah, with 30, 30 seconds on the clock, I don't think the Hydra is going to be able to make it up there. I know for a fact the Iron Rain is not at all. KV4 kind of seems like he overexposed. I'm a little bit sad I wasn't here to watch that go down. Or he was focused on spec and probably got hit by a tanks across the map. More than likely the Strav and the General both had shots in the KV4. I wonder if we can actually look at him and see some bullet marks here. <laughs> look at that perfectly landed shot in the machine gun port. Someone had some really good uh, marksmanship here. Or fantastic RNG on their side. Yep, they're just going to come in a little bit short there. Yep. They were not fast enough to make it up that hill with the Hydra. That, that's kind of why I said you're going to want to run a couple of mediums on that map. Just because it's it, it's really hilly. You, you want that power to weight and top speed. <clears throat> yep. Okay, we're going to screenshot this one too. Um, my my uh, screenshot collection that I have right now is tremendous, by the way, guys. <laughs> so White Wolves taking the win on that map. Honestly, dude, that was really cool to watch. I'm not going to lie. I enjoyed that. And from what I know, um, that might be it. Those were the two maps that I was told about. But we're not finished yet. We still have quite a bit. Did they just win two in a row? Yeah, they won two in a row. They took over El Haloof, and they also took over Sand River. So White Wolves right now just took over two maps. Um, up next... Let's yeah, it actually, looks like they're uh, done. Oh, no, no. Um, they're done. There, there's still right. uh, another game going on. So up next, we have CZR versus White Wolves. They're doing a back-to-back -back run here. I do not know the two maps that are going to be coming up, but I will try my best to keep you guys informed of what's coming up. Uh, but Map Fights Battle League, if you guys don't know about this, seriously, uh, just start mentioning it everywhere. Let everyone know about this. Just because th this type of uh, comp fights right here is really cool to watch, and I'm extremely honored that they asked me to be one of the streamers taking over. So, thank you guys. I'm enjoying this quite a bit. But while that, while waiting for the next group, I'm actually going to be hitting pause on record for YouTube. That way YouTube doesn't have to sit here and wait. 
for a long time. But before we do that, let's head back to the main game here. We do have uh, to go over the damage that was done during last match. So popping up, we have Bjorn inside the Straw of K with 4,327. We have Spec inside the Defender with 919. Uh, Lone Killer inside the Defender. Elite Storm inside the Bad Chat. Spartan inside the General. Honestly, Bjorn did a fantastic job with that fire across the map inside that straw of S1. That's a really good chunk of damage, leaving the rest of his team in the dust. Honestly, his positioning was fantastic. His scouts were doing a really good job. Marshall down in the bottom here with 1,634 and Elite Storm with 1,781 assist. They were definitely helping that Straw of K get those shots across the map. Um, over on uh, EBQC side with Steve, win the Iron Rain with 2,835. We have uh, M inside the Soma SM with 20. 330 we have uh bean inside the ml1 with 1364 steph inside the equalizer with 833 vulgar fool inside the inferno with 745 and then we have ripper inside the kv4 of 582 along with that doc inside the hydra of 456 and jimbo in the batch at 12 with 171 but 4223 assist he was helping his team out tremendously yeah, that, that was uh, fantastic work on Jim, Jimbo's side. But I do feel like the artillery was limiting them quite a bit. I, I do too. Yeah. So while this is uh, taking a second to come up, let's go ahead and bring uh, back up. CZR versus White Wolves. CZR has entered the room. Yeah, I need to get your audio included over to uh, the side panels. Mm -hmm. But what we're going to do is, let's go ahead. I'm going to click uh, Be Right Back. Right now, Halloween Tanks, this is uh, being put together by Slayer with um, White Wolves. So if you guys want to, check it out or participate if you are able to. If you have a Halloween tank, it'd be really cool if you guys can get in on that. Other than that, for YouTube, we're going to be hitting pause. That way they're not going to be sitting around for, I don't know, nine minutes waiting for everything to get set up. All right, and we're back. We're going to be heading back to the game here. Uh, we're going to be resetting the score for White Wolves here. Um, it is still NBA World War II. We're going to be looking at... Tier 10, 7 versus 7 on Himmelsdorf with multi base assault. So, Blade, I have seen a lot of plays in this map in the past with NBA. Yeah. Multi base assault with um, GTL and ITW. I've seen some plays on this map. I kind of wonder what they're going to be doing with this one. Right away, we're already seeing two tanks. There's no spectator mode. I don't know what they're going to be doing spectator mode or not. All right, watching the E4. E4 with the most recent buff, it, it has made that tank extremely aggressive inside the queues. And whenever it comes down to seven versus seven, it's probably one of the best choices to pull out. Yeah, you're seeing a, you're yeah you see the E4 a lot more now. Yeah, than you used to see it. I've always liked the E4. Okay, so we're seeing a Valor pop up with Lone Killer. I wonder what they're going to be doing on this map. Valor, I don't think the Valor would be a solid choice on uh, Himmelsdorf. I kind of, I, I, I want to see, uh, rather than Batchat 25 tons, we have uh, Troma 258 pulling out a Batchat 25 ton. AMX 50 Bs is what I'd like to see pop up. We got two of those popping up right now on CZR. Yeah, and you got two Valors. Oh, one Valor kicked out. Guess he changed his mind. Or it was an accidental boot. Yeah, they opened up the lobby. Yeah. Or he left by accident. That happens occasionally. Look at that. Oh, there he is. Really, really weird. I have a line on my screen. I don't know. Oh, it's on both sides. Never mind. It's perfectly fine. Oh, it's the separation from our names and spectator. <laughs> Blade, I'm a Muppet. I I'm just going to say it. I'm a Muppet, okay? Well, you know, I didn't want to say anything, but, you know.
CZR, we have a uh, moth. Yag. Yag. How would you say that? Moth. 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 No, that's not moth. Moth. Yag moth. Yag moth. Okay. Yag moth. Yag moth. In the AMX 50B, we have uh, L come Tota inside the WZ Quillen. Uh, Mara inside the E4. We have uh, Frid 19 inside the Super Conk. And Troma inside the batch at 25 ton. Ooh, they're pulling out a Strum Tiger. I wonder how they're going to be utilizing mm. that Strum Tiger. That'll be interesting. I have not seen a lot of gameplay with that Strum Tiger other than Visha. And coming down to Tough, 45, pulling up the AMX 50B. So we got two AMX 50Bs in a bat chat. That's a lot of burst potential. Uh, White Wolves, they are definitely going to be wanting to take in this a little bit slow with that burst potential. But they are pulling out some things to counteract it. Uh, we got a 263, uh, two IS7s. Those are going to be helping out with the uh, penetration coming from the bat chat and AMX 50B. But the, the bat chat does have heat rounds, so maybe that's why they're pulling out the bat chat while the AMX 50B only has APCR. So they are avoiding a little bit of that auto ricochet angle. And more than likely, the Strum Tiger is going to be used for the high explosives. They want to hit those haul down tanks. So CZR actually has a really good balance of uh, haul down fighters and easy takedowns. Oh my god, somebody actually pulled out an Andre the Giant. <laughs> Andre the Giant Spartan pulling out Andre the Giant. I wonder how they're going to be using this. 250 yeah, this standard is... with a 280 mm. premium pin. I, I don't feel like the penetration is what they're going to be going for. More than likely, they're going to be doing a uh, AB6 rush, trying to hit that cap and using Andre the Giant. Because it does have a lot better armor models compared to, let's say, like the Panzer 7 or maybe even the Mouse. It's a lot harder to go yep. through if he's angled correctly. See, and I was thinking this would be a good map for the 279E. 27, no, 279E, you would be struggling a little bit. You think? I, I do think so. I do think you'd be struggling a little bit in the 279E. Too flat? No, it's just that there's not a lot of good places to use it in a 7 versus 7 scenario. I figure if you got it down heavy alley in a behind one of the mounds where you could just tilt it up just a touch. Okay, is it is it 8 versus 8 or 7 versus 7? Because looking over on their Discord page here, we have uh, Himmel's Dwarf marked as 10, tier 10, 7 versus 7. Well, it looks like they're running 8 aside, though. Alright, so it's going to be a little bit different then. Yep, let's say 8... eight. Eight against eight. So the last tank, I wasn't able to get it into the screenshot from uh, White Wolves because I thought we we're gonna be doing seven versus seven. So blue, I do not know what blue pulled out, but they're running two tank destroyers on top of that. So yeah, White Wolves is attacking once again. Let's take a look here. We have the uh, double IS seven, double Valor, a chisel. Andre the Giant. Coming over here, we have the uh, 263, which honestly, 263, that fire rate in the alpha. So they have three Valors on the field. Three uh, T95 Chieftains on the field. Which means blues inside a Chieftain right now. Let's go ahead and take a look at... Uh, come over to CZR. I want to see how they're going to be putting together this defense. Too bad they don't have something to uh, accelerate the camera movement. Maybe it would be better off to actually go to the tank camera and swap sides. Yeah, that'd actually be a lot faster to swoop around. Uh huh. So here we go. We got the Quillen that's going to be heading up top. The 263, and it looks like they have a medium heading up. Which the medium they have is the Chisel, which means that right behind him is another heavy tank. More than likely Valor, Chisel, and 263 heading to the castle. They have the Quillen up a little bit further for a little bit of defense. They have their medium over here at D, 5, and 6, and E, just for a little bit of spotting for the bat chat. <laughs> Maybe that's why they're using the bat chat. And the AMX 50Bs are heading up the uh, A9 route just to try and counteract anything coming up there. Both tank destroyers are on B cap right now. I kind of feel like the uh, E4 would be better placed behind this rubble pile here with the most recent turret buff. You can treat it like an E3 inside this position. 
no action going on right now. More than likely, they do know that there are multiple tanks coming from center from Banana Road. A little bit of combat coming up from up top. Yeah, gotta... Some shots are being fired. CZR, we have uh, Yag. You got the Conqueror sitting down here. He just took a shot. Yeah, we're getting some crossfire here. IS-7 looks like an IS-7 took a little bit of a hit. But IS-7s, even if they're low health, they still have a lot of armor they got to go through. And if they're hauled down, they're very difficult to go up against. So more than likely, that might be why they're pulling up the Strum Tiger to get that nice, fat, juicy 1700 Alpha HE shell to be able to splash them. Uh, right now, it looks like Spec is in a very bad position, pushing up a little bit too far. Spec is knocked out by the QL and uh, Super Conk. IS-7 inside the back here. Right now, I would say uh, CZR looks like they have really good positioning. They're getting a pincer going on. We have the E4 coming up from behind. Uh, there is a push coming up from up top, MX-50Bs. They do have a 27 second reload, so they are out of the fight for a little while, but the reload is fast enough that they're not out too long. And with the mobility that's offered, they are very quick. Mm. But White Wolves right now, they are losing a lot of hit points Boss yeah, taking out, Bjorn taking out, Specs out, Spartan taking a massive chunk, losing quite a bit. Spartan inside the Andre, Spartan is now Andre taken skull. out. Blue is getting flanked right now inside of a Valor. He is yep. getting extremely hard. He's in a very bad pincer. Yeah, he's knocked done. out. Two yeah, six this, three this, knocked oof. out as well. So Lone Killer taken down. All that's left is the Chisel and a Valor. CZR had really good execution on this map. This map is very hard to go against the attackers. And there you go, Strum Tiger with a big fat HE shell just taking down the chisel, mm -hmm. which was Marshall. Left standing, we have Elite Storm bouncing a shell off the Strum Tiger. That armor in the front of the Strum Tiger is actually extremely nice and losing a very fat amount of hit points, leaving him down to a one-shot. And, you know, I, I tell you what, nobody went heavy alley. Well, they, and, and I, they I kind of feel like uh, the push down heavy alley, they went a little bit too fast. They should have left someone behind. That way, if they did get flanked, they can try and try and pull off a pincer. But with the Bat Chat 25 ton on the field, he probably would have came up behind him and just had a clip ready. Other than that, Leap Storm is at yep. the T95 with 3077. We have Marshall inside the Chisel with 1181. We have Boss inside the I7 with 951. We have Blue in the Valor with 864. Spartan, Bjorn, Lone Killer, and Spec all doing under 1,000 damage. Coming over to CZR side, Strum Tiger of 2,712. Strum Tiger, really good choice in that map from the way it's looking. The high explosives, the counteract, the uh, heavy haul down fighters. Along with that, we have Frid inside the Superconic with 2,574. We have uh, Tota inside the Quillen with 2,454. Mara inside the E4 with 2,454. A lot of these guys, extremely nice spread of damage across the board. They all knew their roles and knew what they had to take care of. Um, from White Wolf's side, though, I would I would like to say uh, there could be a little bit of a change up on that. Oh yeah, we're already seeing the Type Five heavy. <laughs> Lone killer. Oh, that thing's huge. Oh, look at that. Turbo's pulling out the E three. The OE3. Elite Storm with the OE4. CZR taking one right now. <clears throat> you know, I had time to change these during the break. I should have changed everything up. Would have had the chance. Starting yeah, to see CZR. him pull out some heavier army. Yeah, uh, CZR pulling out some heavy armor right there. We got two Super Conks, E4, Bat Chat 25 ton. Uh, two Amix 50Bs, the Bat Chat. They're still running the uh, auto loader group there. Over in White Wolf's side. They can side. pay off well, but they gotta, you know, they got to stick together when they do that. 
Yeah, the, you know what the, I mean? the bat chat can kind of get away with it because he's a smaller target. More than likely, they're going to have the bat chat running solo and the uh, 50 bees teaming up together. Yep, but if I'm running an auto loader, I'm staying with one of the super comps because they got the fast reload so that they can guard me while I'm reloading my... But the my, super conks, more know. than likely, super conks are going to have positions on the map that they're going to stick to and stay there. So really, whenever it comes down to it, you know, teaming up with the yeah. super conch, you know, the, the conks will move together. The 50 Bs, you know, you have one clip out, the other one doesn't clip out, kind of saves it in between. Or they both do a clip out on a single tank and get ready to do an ultimate push and not really risk their hit points because they want to save those hit points for later in the game. I'm just, you know, I mean, if you're going to take an auto loader, I'm surprised somebody's not using a Pajetto. Pajettos have too long of a reload. So compared to like the AMX 50B, it's got a 400 alpha, 27 second reload. And along with that, it's a 120 millimeter four shot. So whenever you compare like to Pajetto, Pajetto, it has too long of a reload and not enough of an alpha to really make a difference inside those matches. I like my Pajetto. <laughs> I, I know you like your Pajetto blade. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Yeah, yeah, this is not map fights. Okay. So this is best two out of three. Yeah, this is a uh, not map fights. Really confused on this. Really lost. Map fights was the first run up against uh, the first team. I have a brain fart in that right now. Let's take a look here. CZR, uh, they're going to be doing some pushes down low. Got the MX 50B. We got one heading down low. Another one heading up high. Bat Chat's going to be heading down the G line. They're probably going to be going for A. It looks like they're doing an A rush. Over on White Wolf's side. White Wolves, they did yeah. pull out. White Wolf's setting up for an A defend. Yeah, A A's a little bit... Uh, a is one of the harder ones to defend. B, it's real easy to relocate back to B if you need to go back. But we're going to double Quillen. And it looks like. Double Valor, E3, Type 5, E4, and IS7 over on White Wolf side. Not too much action going on right now. Everyone's just trying to stay concealed. They don't want them to know where they're coming from right now. White Wolves lacking a little bit of view range with the tank destroyer coming down here. Just checking out a hill, looking for cross shots on Banana Road. And coming down the K line, we are looking at an AMX 50B. Combined with that, we have an IS-7 and E4. A decent push and a QL. This is a really heavy push coming down the uh, A cap. Yeah, it, it looks like the IS-7 is getting ready to do a push to head straight in the A and risk it for the biscuit. Or the Bad Chat might be. They might be using the Bat... No, Bad Chat's just coming over to uh, maybe use Concealment and slowly push up to spot out targets. QL's making a push right now. Blowing up a couple of cars. Um, from the point of view, depending if uh, White Wolves right now is aimed in on this side, they can see those destructible items going off. <coughs> Yeah, right now we have a couple of marks on A cap. This is going really <laughs> slow right now. IS seven is about ready to get spotted out. There yeah, we go. Everybody's uh. IS seven is actually making the push to try and get on the cap, getting tracked down the open, popping that repair kit. Still getting hit in the tracks right now. Bad chat looks like he's gonna be trying to push up a little bit. No one's lost any health right now. People are making really, really conservative plays here pushing up. Over on CCR, we have Mara inside the IS-7. So Mara with a three marked IS-7 making a little bit of aggressive plays. Right here, I do like this setup. A little bit further out, that way you can't get high explosive. 
Uh, maybe that's the reason why they pulled out the Type 5 over on uh, White Wolf's side. Pulling out the Type 5 to try and do some high explosive shells down here. Lone Killer taking a shot, Spartan also taking a shot, but they are definitely uh, sending fire back and trading hit for hit right now. Over on uh, CZR side, we have uh, Troma taking a hit. We have No Way taking a hit. Up on top, we have Rogue also taking a hit. All within the 400 range. 400 to 490 to a 500 range. Lone Killer taking another shot inside the uh, Type 5. He does have a lot of hit points to spare, 2,800 of them. Mm. Yeah, but right now, CZR has made a really good play to take over this cap. Yeah, they're tank. all over a cap. Yeah. Right now, White Wolves, they're kind of uh, limited down to a couple of choices of what they got to do. They're trying to push in right now to get a reset on that cap. But the uh, Super Conk and the QL over on the right side here from CZR, they are definitely set up well. Uh, right now, the AMX-50B and the Tank Destroyer on top of the hill are getting a couple of shots heading down. Elite Storm is taking a hit. Lone Killer pulling out in the open there, taking a shot from the hill. They did manage they did to reset manage. the cap and make Mara pull out, lowering uh, Mara yep. down to half health, a little bit lower. Rogue is down to half health. Right now, everyone's still alive, but hit points are uh, a little bit scarce. Elite has taken quite a beating over on White Wolf's side. He is down to, let's say, maybe two more shots of 400. Uh, one shot left for him, and Lone Killer being focused out right now. They wanted to get yep. that Type 5 out, get rid of that big derp gun. But in exchange, uh, trauma over in the enemy team is also taking down in CZR. Hit points are looking like an even spread right now. Slowly losing. White Wolves is, uh, it's not looking too good right now for White Wolves. They're a little bit exposed being further up right now. Because CZR, they had the Super Conk and the Amex oh. 50B pull in the back here. Kind of a difficult play to handle. Because as that timer Ooh, went down. ISIS. IS-7's out. IS-7's out. Yeah, so we got the E4 yep. right behind him. E4 taking another shot. Elite's going to be taken out by the Amex 50B. Yep, right there. Or MX50B, he backed off. He might be on reload right now. Or is backing off just because the E4 did turn around. More than likely, we might be seeing the QL pull up. Or what do we have back here? We have another E4. E4 and E4 action. Let's see what happens here. Elite is able to get a shot off into the AMX-50B, but not enough to take him down. Elite is taken nope. out. But Moth right now, he is uh, he's definitely a one-shot, about 100 hit points, maybe less remaining inside that overall cat. Hit point spread. CZR has 1,400 more hit points right now. And White Wolves is just still, slowly just getting chomped away little by little. They were yep, they're they're just... a little bit too far spread out now. And yep. now CZR, all they have to do right now is just clean up with the two remaining tanks. So Spec is uh, getting focused out. Really good focus out here with the MX-50B and the uh, QL. Coming yeah, from the back here. Spartan is inside. A QL in the back. You know, just by, by that point, you're kind of just waiting for your death. Right. It's like, why prolong the inevitable? Go out there and do what damage you can. Yeah. So that was well executed. having some really good execution there. Definitely. Yep. White Wolves, like, that. White Wolves, they had a really good execution on that second round on defense. But the way that CZR played it and they had Mara jumping up in the IS-7 to push up and hit that cap right away, that was a really good play early on. It kind of, it put a lot of pressure on White Wolves because it was either wait for the cap to end or, you know, push in and risk a lot of hit points. I mean, look but, how, I mean, look how spread out the damage is over, over them too. Yeah, it was I a mean, really good damage spread. Uh, and they did it both games were like that. I mean, they all did their part. Yeah, really good say. damage spread across the board there. It 
Looks like they're doing stupid. Yeah, we got food in the E4. Most of the time, though, you're going to be seeing the E4 hammering out damage like that quite a bit, though. Marshall inside the QL doing uh, 2653, really good on the White Wolf side. It was it was really good damage spread on both sides, but the second CZR hit that base cap and started capping out, they started to really apply that pressure. You know, they had to get that move on. Yeah, once you start applying that pressure, it causes them to start exposing themselves to try to get the cap to stop, you know, to stop the cap. Yeah. You have to start taking chances that you might not normally take. Definitely. And with the Type 5, Type 5 didn't have a lot of speed. And the second it was coming across, he had to deal with that tank destroyer up on the hill. And along with that, the AMX 50B. So he was just taking shots inside, inside that Type 5, pushing across there. I do believe he lost like 800 hit points pushing across that open area. Yeah. Yeah, he took a beating. I know how that feels, man. I've, I've had the same thing happen to me from people up on top of the hill up there. Yeah, but public queues, it's a lot different compared to matches like this. True. Because in right. matches like this, this is actually communication across an entire team. It's not just one guy's up there because he felt like being up there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, th this or is, four guys this is a there. lot of practice and a lot of stuff put together to make it work this way. Hmm. CZR Lamar. Did I not Seven pause the stream? Well, did in. I not pause YouTube? I don't think I paused X. YouTube. I thought you did. I thought I did too. But did my mouse like is my mouse has been up? double tapping quite a bit, so there's a chance to skip past it. No. <laughs> Well, I haven't looked at your YouTube to know if you were still streaming on there or not. Oh no, I'm not streaming on YouTube. We're we're uh we're doing a stream on Twitch and recording on YouTube. Well, gotcha. White wolves pulling out some really heavy hitters here. Really good haul down fighters. It is steps. Steps is gonna be really hard to uh handle without some haul down fighters. That's why I was looking, because I see them pulling out some a light tank and the bat chat. Yeah, so we got a triple Valor set up over in White Wolves with the bat chat 25 ton, a Sheridan IS-7 bat chat 25 ton, double bat chat, double IS-7, and three Valors. Honestly, a really good spread right there. And for CZR, we're looking at IS-7, Batchat, T-100LT, Supercock, TVP, T-5051, Strum Tiger, Conqueror, Valor. Strum Tiger again. I'm actually wondering how they're going to be utilizing that Strum Tiger. Are they going to be going for haul down shots and trying to, you know, weaken up the Valors and the IS-7s? On a matchup like this, though, more than likely, White Wolves will be having that bat chat headed down the 1-2 uh, line for scouting. Or maybe even sending the Sheridan down that way. And over on CZR, we're looking at a T-100LT with Mara. Uh, as we can see on the map right now, Mara is actually taking a lead in the charge here. It, it looks like they're going to be heading over to A. Yep, that's what it looks to me. Um, A is going to be really hard to take down. White though. Wolf looks like they're, yeah. White Wolf looks like they're setting up along both the B and cap are heading down low. Uh, their scout tank right now with the Sheridan. Kind of wondering uh, why he's not pushing out to the center area. More than likely, he came up top to get some view range heading down here to spot out targets that they're coming out in the open, and he's going to relocate back. Well. Oh. Both the Valors are over here watching the A-cap. 
Yeah, which is kind of interesting. Neat. Yep. Oh, I agree. All right, shots are being fired right now from White Wolves. Sending some shots down range towards the light tank T100. Applying a little bit of pressure. So yeah, um, CZR is leaving their two mediums in the back near H, J, and K. And T100 is just running out in the open field here, scouting out. And Bad Chat's actually pushing down the center. I wonder what they're going to be doing with this setup here. Bad Chat taking the bush and the tree right there. Very strong position for scouting. Just probably going to try and get some side shots if we watch uh, White Wolves pull up over the hill here, trying to defend over at A. Ooh, this could be interesting. They're setting up pretty good over here at A over here. Yeah, they're getting a couple of lineups. Strum Tiger further in the back. Going to be a lot harder to spot him out. Yep. Not really much action. We have the heavy starting to push up. The IS-7 and two Super Conks. Yep. Shots flying down range. It does look like Mara actually had a ricochet. Super Conks are taking some shots down at the Valors over on uh, White Wolf's side. Really slow engagement here. Stuff is not like, uh, yeah, they're not taking this fast. Yeah. They want to take it slow. Yeah, everybody's taking their time pretty much. It, it, all right, so right there, it looks like the Valors are actually firing off some Hesh rounds because a little bit of health just came off Moth. Or Moth. Yeah, he's, he's going to kill me one of these days if he ever meets me. Yeah, they got the T-100 <laughs> sitting over inside the cap right now. Up in the bushes there. That's going to apply yeah, a he's lot gonna be... of pressure. Uh, yeah, because he's going to be hard to spot. He's heading around the back, though. Yep. So if White Wolves were looking at the double bat chat 25 tons, they're forcing their mediums to push forward right now. Kind of funneling them all in. Um, from my point of view, if I was on White Wolf's side, I'd actually be just sending shells randomly inside the cap circle right now. Because it does look like there is no tree to knock down, so maybe they don't know that the T-100 is here. I know T-100 has extremely good concealment, and behind those bushes would be extremely hard to spot out. Right now, really good strategy over on CZR's side, but they are losing a lot of hit points and taking a lot of risks. White Wolves, their, their damage... Uh, seems to be balanced out. Bjorn right now is taking an absolute beating over on the opposite side of the oh, train yeah. tracks here. Bjorn has been knocked out. He probably got tracked up on the top section there inside the IS-7. He did. But he did allow the Valor to push over top here, which can provide a little bit of ease off the cap because the T-100 did fall back because of the Bat Chats coming up from the rear. Yeah, but he's got... What is that over there? IS-7 right now actually just pulling a little bit of hold. See if we can get some shots over on the uh, Valor, but it looks like the Bat Chats from behind are hitting him right now. Yeah, oh, there we go. IS-7 is taking a lot of hits, which is blue over on... Uh, no. Yag. Yeah. Only took one shot out of that. Oh. Elite Storm knocked out. Both Bat Chats have been knocked out. The Sheridan oh, is still yeah, back here, a little bit further back, up in the bush line. More white than likely, wolves. he might be spotted out by the medium. He's getting rushed right now by the bat chat. Yeah, white Spec is losing quite. Yeah, they are. A second ago, it looked like an even spread, but they started to push up a little bit too much, risking <coughs> a lot of hit points. Yeah, they risked too much. Yeah, heading up, but at, like a play like that with oh, the T100. Just... Oh, Boss just took almost all of his health in a matter of seconds. It seems yep, like the Strum Tiger is getting some shots in. He pulled up too far. It's it's spotting. They got no spotting. Yeah, well, their bat chats coming up from the back section was a good play, but poor execution on that part. They, I guess they weren't expecting to get hit by the uh, heavies coming from the rear. So right now we got Blue sitting here inside the IS-7. He's extremely low health of one shot. Uh, Strom's taken hits. I don't think he's going to make it. Down. 
Yep, Strom's eye. He pulled out in the open. I don't know really know why. He just I, I guess he thought he was gonna charge the guy, but didn't work out for nah, him. Nah, he probably wanted to get the extra little bit of gun depression to get a couple of shots off, get some damage out there. Yeah, he put some he did some work. So did the Valor. Yeah, CZR had some really good damage across the board there. White Wolves, a little bit of a struggle, but who knows? Next round, they probably will be able to make a comeback off that. <coughs> or it was three and done. I guess they were doing the one match. Yeah. Yeah, I guess it was, because I just got kicked. Yeah. Honestly, dude, some re really good games tonight. Yeah, they were. They were really good games. Yeah. Yeah, I, I really thought uh, White Wolf had something going there for a minute in that last game, but as soon as as, as, soon as that uh, LT100 got on the cap, it started going downhill for them. They started risking too much. Yeah, losing a lot of hit points there. You know, I had to pull yep. up, fall back a little bit. The bad chat's pulling back the way they did. You know, and heading around the back of the map. That that was a good idea. But the way that they did it, you always have that hill right on that bottom left corner that you got to poke. It's always nice to yep. have someone kind of sitting up top to be able to get some view range out there. It kind of, from yep. the, the way it looked on the map, they both went around the hill, and the second they did, they got spotted out. But they were getting some nice shots across over at the um, IS-7, but sadly, the IS-7 only had one shell go through and the uh, side armor kind of absorbed the rest. Uh-uh. Somebody's wanting a one versus one, you. <laughs> I know, it's Otis. <laughs> oh. No, but I, I would say well, the, was, the uh, games tonight were really good to watch. They were. I, I, I really enjoyed that. You know, yeah. I mean... The strategies, some of the strategies kind of surprised me. Yeah. You should have saw the ones yesterday over in Mines. They pulled out a double type 5. Really? That, that one surprised me. Well, it's a small map. I guess the type 5 wouldn't be bad on there. Yeah, especially whenever there's machines, you know, and you, they're trying to get in the middle and you got the side shots. Yeah, that 1300 yep. alpha is very scary to go up against. I would say <laughs> that's, that's definitely a viable play with type 5s on that map. Yep, I would agree. Well, other than that, oh. you guys, it was nice having you here. Thanks for kicking back and, you know, watching us commentate over this. So until next time. Yeah. Y'all have fun. Yeah, that was that was, that was nice. White Wolves oh, had a lot of really good games. So let's Just, go ahead and make a shout out. EBQC, you guys had some really good runs. Up next, let's go ahead and take a look here. I'm actually going to go ahead and drop that one. Because that wasn't map fights. It's okay, guys. Totally okay. I, I kind of just went with it, kind of as it came, you know, just the flow of it. But CZR, fantastic matches, you guys. Fantastic matches. Come back over EBQC, some good games. Yeah, I would say those matches, it was really nice to be able to kick back and watch those. Thank you guys for having me here. So, till next time, you guys have fun.